Hi, Chad here with Purple Car Life, and today's video is sponsored by BMW Hitches. In today's video, we're going to assemble and install the BMW Ford Puck System 25,000 pound fifth wheel hitch into our new F350. Now, as you can see, I've already got the installation done. This is my first time ever assembling or installing a BMW hitch into the back of a Ford Puck System truck. The entire process took me about an hour and a half to two hours and I'll go over with you the tools I needed along the way. So I'd say if you're following this process, make sure you always refer to the instructions. This video is no replacement for following the instructions, but go ahead and watch the whole thing one time through and then a second time as you're actually doing the install. Like I said, an hour and a half to two hours, probably if I were doing it again now, it would take me an hour or less. Now that I've done it all once, I know the process a lot better. I'll also put a link down in the description to all the Amazon tools that we used here in this installation process including the hitch. You can actually buy this hitch off of Amazon. If you're considering buying the hitch or any of the tools we use, we'd appreciate if you use those Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any more money, but does give us credit for sending you to Amazon to find those items. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the side arms onto the base. You can see we do have the model RVB3305 base, and we've got the 25,000 pound base. This, this process is the same with the 20,000 pound base. Uh, this just happens to be the 25,000 pound base. We have these plates, our bolts, two of these arms. Now we can choose whether we want these arms. There's a little bit of an angle to them. You can see how when you place them in the bottom base, you can either be facing the front of the camper a little bit more forward towards the cab of your truck or a little bit more backwards towards the tailgate. I have my tape measure here and I did some measuring just as the instructions say to measure from the kingpin to the edge of the trailer and then from the center of your coupler to the bed rails and to the tailgate. So I've determined that because we have a long bed and we've got plenty of space in front of the hitch, we're going to go ahead and use these mounted like this so that the camper is as far forward as possible. Now looking inside that handhole, you can see where those holes are. And we're going to put these plates in so that it makes contact with those bolts we just put through. Now I'm just putting a couple bolts in here temporarily to hold this in place. I've chosen for my pickup truck one slot down after measuring the hitch is about an inch higher than this arm and if I choose this position I'm at 17 that will mean my hitch is about 18 inches above the bed which is exactly where I want it. These plates you'll see that there's a side with thread clear out to the edge and a side that's bored and we want to use the side that's bored up against the mounting bracket because you can see these bolts have a little bit of an unthreaded section so if we would bottom all the way down into there that gives this bolt somewhere to seat into that board out section of this plate so again we've got the board out section we want that to face where our bolts are coming through and we want all five holes to line up so i am using the second hole down and i'll just start threading that in a little ways to hold our plate and our arm in place now I just want to do a visual inspection and make sure that I am using the second hole up and the second hole down where my bolts are coming through. And I can see inside there I am in the second hole down and the second hole up the same as I am on this side if you could see those holes just like on this side. I'll do the same thing on this other side. Again, plate with the board out section facing in. I'm just making these finger tight for now. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we will get our torque wrench out and torque these down. So I've got my torque wrench and my Nico Pro socket set here. 
I want to set this to 110 foot-pounds and that's the level we want to torque these bolts to. I'm using three-quarter inch socket. Now in order to get those torqued to 110 foot-pounds I'm gonna to have to be attached to the truck. I'm just lifting the uh, hitch off the bed here. So we'll pull our four pucks out for the Ford puck system. I like to keep these in the side pocket of my door so I always know where they are. In order to get these pins into the puck system, we need to take this clip out and rotate these to that position. And that allows these bottom pieces to be oriented in such a way that they'll go into the puck holes. Now you need to be able to turn these in to lock them in place. When they come from the factory, they may be a little bit too tight to make that connection. This one's actually okay. This one's a little bit too tight. So in order to loosen it up, take a pair of pliers, push this little cotter pin through, and we're gonna loosen this bolt just a little bit until we can make contact and you want it to be snug, but not so hard to do that you can't do it. So we go just a little tiny bit more. I think that's perfect. We'll find the hole here to slide our pin back through. And this side set will do the same on the other side. Now that the hitch is secured to the bed, we can work on getting these bolts torqued to 110. There we go. Put our safety pin back through these handles. Same on the other side. Next thing we want to do is install the leveling kit just like it shows here in the instructions. We want it to line up just like this. We want it to be on loose enough that the spring can still rotate around but tight enough that it's not going to fall off. Okay, the next step, this is the driver's side of the truck. We now have our clip tightened on with that bolt and we want to tap this onto here so that there's about a half inch of space between this top rubber piece and this. So somewhere right about here. In case you're thinking, hey, it seems like the next day you're wearing different clothes, you're right. I didn't have any lithium grease, and it calls for lithium grease on these shoulder points. So I had to go this morning and get some. I'll put a link to this down in the Amazon description. Uh, if you want to buy it, you can use that link. It would help us out. Now we can just lift the head plate up on top of those shoulders. Put these pins back through. We're going to adjust that little clip so that it's forcing the head to be facing towards the trailer a little bit. A little bit downhill so that when that kingpin slides on, it's nice and smooth. There you can see the head is mounted onto the shoulders. These pins are in place. We did a check to make sure we can't lift that off. Our final step is to put the handle on. We're going to use our button head screws in the two furthest holes from the outside of the handle. And then we have some nuts for the bottom. So the top of that Allen bolt is a 7 seconds, and the bottom is a 9 16 
and we can see that when the clamp closes our hole is lined up for our safety pin just like that when the king pin goes in here it'll press on that which will automatically close the handle around the king pin and then our safety clip will lock it in place so we've got these two safety pins holding the head on this one holding that clamp shut if you recall i wanted to be about 17 inches from the deck of the bed up to where my connection point is and we are going to be right about 17 or 18 inches so right where we want to be now i can tell you right off the bat i am really impressed with the paint quality the construction quality and the process of installing this hitch but I also wanted to mention this is a sponsored video, but I did want to mention just because it's a sponsored video doesn't mean we wouldn't give you our full honest review on a product. Just like any product we would accept here at Purple Color Life, we only accept those products and make a video about them if there's something we would actually use and if we can honestly give a review afterwards. And if this video helps you out along the way, we'd really appreciate if you would give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. As you know, that helps out the video and helps out our channel. So with the new BMW hitch, I bought uh, one of the lube plates so we don't have to get grease all over the new hitch. We're back on the kingpin. I had cleaned this all off before I put the Anderson hitch on. So it's nice and clean. We'll just put the lube plate on it. And that should tighten up when we pull into the hitch. How's the new backup camera work? Awesome. I still look out the back window though. I'm so used to so does your does the pin go underneath that silver plate or above it? Where's it go? See the clamps in there that will grab it? Yeah. Not much space again. That's what I was looking at too. Well, how do you know that it's in? I got to pin it. And then to know that it's fully closed, Pushing it back for a pin through, and that keeps it from being able to be opened up. And that should mean that our king pin is locked in the clamp. We're going to do a back up and just a little bit of a tug test just to make sure that nothing moves around before we put the legs up. There we go, first connection, pulled out from the parking spot, did some articulation tests up here in the driveway where the camper can go side to side a little bit more. Uh, I, I chose, I ended up moving the hitch to the highest position, which gives me the most clearance between the bed rails and the camper. We do have a little bit of a downhill slope to the camper now, but I'd rather have more space here with a little bit of a slope than less space with a, a level camper. So I think we're in good shape there. It felt felt nice there wasn't that uh, chucking that we had with our previous uh, husky hitch now that was an old hitch probably 12 years old roughly 10 to 12 years old and it was a noisy one it was you know really clunky i like the clamp system i like the pin so that i can know that can't come unclamped at all while we're driving um, i know some people say you shouldn't connect your safety clip to anything that's part of the hitch so if the Hitch ripped out with the camper. Obviously, it's not going to engage the brake. So I'd like to hear from those of you who tow, where do you connect your electric safety brake cord? 
Um, I've actually been thinking about connecting it back here on one of the hook points of the truck so that if for some reason this all came disconnected, that would pull uh, from the truck and cause the brakes to come on. Hopefully we'd never have to use that, but I did I have seen people comment that you shouldn't connect it to the hitch. So I'm curious, where does everybody else connect it? Thanks for watching. If this video entertained or informed you in any way, we'd appreciate you give us a thumbs up. Helps out the channel, helps out this video. And again, links down below in the uh, description to the Amazon affiliate links to the stuff we showed in the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time. Should let the clamps open up. Should. Should. These are very slow. Is the clamp already supposed to be open? It should open up as we pull away from Oh. It. Did it not? That's kind of nerve-wracking. Did it not open up? Did it? Yeah, it's opening. See it? <laughs>